This episode of Prop 3D is brought to you by Autodesk. Hello everybody and welcome to the office. This is Bill Duran here, prop maker and costume maker, and I'm here to bring you our very first episode of a new series called Prop 3D. In this series, we will be showing you a whole bunch of cool tips and tricks on 3D printing things so that you can make really great props and costume pieces. For this first episode, I wanted to pick something a little bit basic, but still really, really cool. So we will be making a Batarang. Yes, that's right. Batman's favorite uh, bludgeoning device, the old Batarang. When planning out the model for this, I knew I wanted to split it up a little bit. It is too wide to fit in the print bed by itself, so I knew I would at least have to split it in half, which is exactly what I did. Uh, I added a little mortise and tenon kind of joint there so that when it gets glued together, it would be a nice strong hold. But I also split it in half this way so that I wouldn't have to print it upside down and put supports under these large bevels. Using support material is fine and you gotta do it sometimes, but if I can avoid it, I like to. So first I drew up my Batarang design. This is something I just came up with over breakfast on some scrap paper. And then I fired up 123D Design to model my Batarang. If you're interested in seeing the entire modeling process, there's a link to that video down in the description, but here's the quick and dirty version. I drew an outline of my Batarang using splines just loosely based on the drawing I did. Once this outline was done, I could extrude it and give it some volume, creating a solid. Then, to put these nice beveled blade edges on the Batarang, I put a big old chamfer along those edges. And then the rest of all the edges got just a little bit of a chamfer to smooth everything over a bit. Finally, I mirrored that piece and created the mortise and tendon joint by extruding a rectangle in and out of those two pieces. Once I was happy with the design, I could send it over to Mesh Mixer to position it on my build plate and make sure everything would fit. And then I dumped it over into the Dremel software to get it ready to print on this guy right here. Using the best settings available, I let it do its thing and it printed it out for me. The print looked pretty good, so I peeled it off the build platform and got to work finishing it as a prop. Most importantly, I needed those joints to fit really well and they needed just a little bit of cleanup work. So I used some tiny files and some sandpaper until they fit just so. Once they were good to go, I could glue those two halves together using super glue. And I did this for both sides of the Batarang. To glue the two layers together, I opted for a five minute epoxy. This gives me a little more working time and it's a really, really good bond. First, I sanded the two surfaces, then I mixed up my epoxy and brushed it on both sides before sandwiching them together and then putting weights on them and letting it cure. This did create a little bit of squeeze out along that seam, but I knew I was gonna have to do some seam cleanup anyway. So again, using those files and using my sanding paper and using sanding sticks, I cleaned up the whole seam around the Batarang. Then I had to sand the entire surface to get it all ready for finishing. After that first pass of sanding, I sprayed down the entire Batarang with some filler primer. This is a thicker primer spray paint that fills in any small grooves and gaps and any of that little texture bit, and then it self levels, creating a nice smooth surface. That filler primer can then get sanded down and it stays in the little grooves and everything, helping the surface get a lot more level. After that, I could find any other places I wasn't totally happy with, any small gaps or any textures that were left, and I used an air drying putty to fill in those tiny gaps. Once that dries, I could sand it down, creating a really nice smooth surface. Then I can hit the whole thing with just a normal rattle can of primer, and this will sort of point out any flaws, any areas that I missed. If I'm happy with it, I can just go straight to paint. If not, I could repeat the sanding and filling process again. In this case, I was totally happy with the finish and I knew it was time to paint it. So I hit it with some black spray paint, to put down my base layer of paint. Once that was done, I wanted to make the edges pop a little bit and make it look more metallic. So using a silver acrylic paint and a ratty old brush, I did a whole lot of dry brushing on all of the edges, especially those bladed edges that need to look all beat up. Dry brushing requires a light touch though. Don't put on too much paint. Dab on a little bit of paint, 
wipe most of it off and then brush the edges of your prop piece a whole bunch applying just a tiny bit of paint each layer. Once I was happy with that, I wanted to seal the whole thing to make sure none of that paint rubbed off. So I sprayed it with a little bit of matte clear spray paint and voila, it is all done. That is my quick 3D printed Batarang. The print I think took about five hours or so. I had to do it twice, two and a half hours each side. And then the finishing work only took another couple of hours. So this is a pretty quick little weekend project if you want to uh, go out there and fight crime in Gotham City. If you're interested in following along at home, again, we have the modeling video you can go check out, but also in the description, I have links to all of the tools and materials that we used. Thanks for checking out Prop3D, you guys. We're gonna have more of these videos coming over the next few weeks, so make sure you subscribe. But also, if you haven't already, we've got a bunch of other prop and costume making videos that you ought to check out. So go see those, and I will see you on next week's episode of Prop3D.